All right, we're back. And here we are with my favorite guest, my wife, Chrissy G, Christina Garbowski. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back on The Climb. Thanks for having me. You are a fan favorite. And when I say fan, <laughs> I mean the two that are in your household, me and Rover. We love you very much. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> yeah. All jokes aside, everything you've had um, on here thus far has been very, very good. And it's been nice just to share a little bit about our relationship and, um, you know, how you've been a difference maker in my life. So I am excited just to, you know, as we develop, kind of share some nuances of, of what's going on and what we're, you know, continuously working on. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate everything that you've uh, contributed to the podcast. Of course. And to the household. Me and Rover just love you. Oh, love you too. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, as Christina knows, uh, last week was one full year of the climb, an episode each week. Yay! Um, computers, <laughs> awesome stuff. And, um, you know, there, it's been really exciting, uh, not only to have Christina, but other people that are really close to me on the climb and be reoccurring guests. Um, you know, something that we set out to do within Team Garbo, uh, you know, a nonprofit that we have that does a lot of local, um, you know, charity work is to bring this sense of community. And, you know, the aspect of being Team Garbo and being called Team Garbo, because it quite literally took a village and it always has taken a village with my journey, with mental health and my climbs of these mountains that presented themselves in front of me. So... To show those types of relationships through the podcast and the podcast having an overarching theme of keeping the conversation going, uh, not just with mental health, but friendship, relationships, uh, struggle, and you know other things of that nature, um, has been has been quite awesome to be a part of. And uh, Christina and I have been happy to uh, you know work through that together on our own, but also have those conversations continue off the off the line with whether it's us or our friends. So everyone's support has been greatly, greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So with it being uh, another year of the climb and, and proving the concept of this, you know, conversation that continues, you're going to see a lot more of those conversations. And I hope to have even more guests on uh, the shared different types of perspective with health, wellness, mental health, physical health, you name it. It's been, you know, eye-opening for myself to see a lot of these different types of core philosophies that people have, um, you know, really kind of deep-rooted in myself too. So the one thing that I want to try something that's just different is to start implementing a little bit of what have I've been working on on the side. And, and it's been mentioned a few times here on the podcast that I've built a model, right? And it's called uh, the Build, Balance, Thrive model. And it's, it's, in essence, a way to climb life's mountains. And the reason it was, you know, kind of made was... I wanted to try to channel as much as I could uh, to make something tangible for people to grab onto when they're facing life's own challenges. And what I thought was so relatable is that we all have our own climb in life. But how do we, you know, get to the point where we're not necessarily, you know, honing in on our achievements in life, but we're harnessing the obstacles that we've overcome. And using that to empower future success, um, whether that's in life and your own health and then wellness journey. So uh, Christina and I have been, you know, embodying that behind the scenes, you know, this entire you know year um, and been trying to, um, you know, really kind of have our own climb and our own way of doing it. So I think uh, a fun exercise that we're going to try with Christina, and I'm going to try it out a little bit with others as well, some of these reoccurring guests, is to walk through some aspects of um, you know, the Build, Bounce, Thrive model. And it's good to hear you know, how it works for me, but it's also good if you hear other people and their perspectives and just little, you know, little spots that could be relatable not everything mm -hmm. has to be so relatable but you can grab on to you know a lot of different things to be helpful mm -hmm. so 
long-winded, but are you excited for it, Christina? Not, not to say you're a <laughs> guinea pig, but uh, you are a great, you know, guest, and this would be fun to do. I'm ecstatic. Fire away. <laughs> okay. So, Christina, question one for $1 million. Name every single aspect. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you had me there. <laughs> I had you. I know. You had you sweating. So, the build base is the base of this of this um you know mountain like structure and and I'm going to post a picture of this video to go over uh this you know this demo um really I guess it would be model right this uh you know PDF model for everyone to see a visual of what I'm talking about but in essence it's a triangle that looks like a mountain and there's three different stages the bottom is the build the medium uh level is the balance and the top is um you know your thrive so each level has different meanings to it but when we talk about the build right and i've talked about this before it's the foundation i've I referenced routine in this type of build it's like an action um that people can do and what's the best routine for them everyone has something that they typically go to when they need to start feeling better about themselves mm -hmm. or work on themselves you know whether it's diet exercise sleep you name it um, but there are certain traits that have really worked well for me when I'm practicing, um, you know, this, this trait or, you know, this action. And one of them happens to be gratitude. And gratitude is one of the eight building blocks. Mm -hmm. And it's been a conversation in our household, Christine and I being so grateful for what we have, um, you know, the experiences we get to share with others, the people we have in our lives, and a little furry guy that's probably sniffing Christina's hand and nudging her uh, underneath the uh, the bar stool right there. So, with that being said, and and you know Christina gets a long uh, winded intro here because this is the first time we're doing it. I wanted to talk about gratitude and how it's helpful uh, for Christina, but also I'll chime in how it's helpful for myself as well. So to start it off really easy, not the million dollar question of all the aspects of the Bill Balance Thrive. Christina, why don't you run me through three things that you're grateful for? Off the top of my head. Off the top of your head. It, so. it, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking it's you, Rover, and our house. Okay. It's those three things all together, you know, they make me the happiest. I love yeah. being home with you and Rover in our beautiful home and just enjoying, you know, our home, each other. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can go, <laughs> I know, right. <laughs> if that wasn't too cheesy, but <laughs> no, it's, it's great. And, um, I think part of what gratitude has done for me, it's almost like humbling is a hard way to say it, but it, it definitely, you know, brings you to a grounding level of, Hey, everything's okay. I'm really lucky to have X, Y, Z. I mean, you can name 300 things that you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, but how does it, you know, essentially make you feel in that moment of like gratitude? Like wh when you're feeling, I guess, nostalgic might be the word, mm -hmm. um, thinking of those three things. Like how does that help you, you know, kind of on a daily basis or, you know, a consistent basis to yeah. look back on that. I think just thinking about it in perspective of like how long ago did you kind of wish for these things and like never, you know, thinking when am I going to have like a home to call like our own and, you know, be married and be like in this spot in life. Um, and then now you, you can sit back and like sit in my living room and everything and just like, like watch and be like, wow, like, you know, I did it. We did it. It's kind mm -hmm. of really like a special uh, moment, you know, feeling grateful, getting that gratitude feeling about just, you know, where you are and how you got there and, and just being so happy for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I know, I know this is the same for you, but it almost like the gratitude, right. For everything that came prior helps kind of fuel it. Like, Hey, it wasn't, I know my journey wasn't hard and I know your, I mean, wasn't easy. And I know yours wasn't easy as well. It, mm -hmm. You know, it, a lot of things um, 
for a, for a lot of people, there there are mountains in in front of everyone's you know road that stand in front of them, mm -hmm. and it almost makes the gratitude a little bit sweeter when you put that in perspective. That hey, I'm like I'm like grateful for all the tough times because it's so much sweeter now to to look around mm -hmm. and be in the present moment and happy with you know those three things. Um, you know, certainly, you know, makes me happy just thinking back on that, but grateful for the hard times too. Yeah, definitely. And like, also just thinking, um, in an, in an, a way is like, you know, we're, you're say you're in your home now and it's always like, Oh, what about the next home and this home now? And we're kind of, I'm kind of just like, and you know, we've talked about it. It's like, no, like I, I don't even, not even in that mindset. Like I, we're so happy here. Like we always had a plan of like, this was like going to be our home for X amount of years. Now it's mm -hmm. like, why are we always chasing something yeah. that, uh, you, you know, you don't really necessarily need, like you have, we have so much and we should be so happy and grateful for that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's just a perfect example. Yeah. I mean, God, that was just really well done. Um, <laughs> I was really well said because I feel like I was, I was, well, I guess that's why we're together, but uh, I was going to say <laughs> something really similar. Um, yeah, it, it helps you enjoy the present moment. How much of, you know, future goals and, uh, you know, potential wants and desires just squandered like this amazing, um, you know, moment that not only we're in, but everyone has mm -hmm. something to be grateful for. Um and yeah, there's science about practicing gratitude and how it can, you know, basically hush the the whispers of anxiety. And oh mm -hmm. my God, it's like so true. Just think about it. Like, why don't I, every time I'm just like anxious about something, feel gra like grateful for having this situation. For instance, like work, like, oh my God, I'm so anxious to go into work. Well, I'm grateful to have a job. Mm -hmm. to you know a lot of people are unemployed a lot of people uh, don't have the means to get an education to get the job or, or to get into this company that you may be in um it, it, when when you start seeing life through that lens and i and i know you see it through that lens it starts to shift right the climb although might be steep is doable mm -hmm. and and is and is getting to that point where it's empowering where the mountains you climb can start to turn into this type of fuel of uh, positivity for, for future obstacles. So, all right, cool. That was good. That was a good segment, Christine. I feel like we could go <laughs> further into that. But uh might be better for me to go someone that's not my wife because we're going to have the same uh, thoughts there. So, <laughs> good, good part. So, Let's talk about the middle part, balance, right? I, I, I mention this a lot, and I truly, truly mean it. You've seen this. You've seen me at a point where I have kind of, you know, when we met, was very mentally tough and kind of knocking a lot of obstacles, was, was volunteering, had Team Garbo, was part of my own job, had a large social life. And I kind of, you know, still pride myself on being able to get a lot of things done and, mm -hmm. and staying on top of different tasks, as well as staying in, involved in a lot of different relationships. In order to do that, and, you know, I've talked about this, you know, mental toughness is probably where you, everyone needs to have some sort of type of mental toughness, whether it's to get you through these resilient and hard times or just, you know, kind of push through some of these uncomfortable moments in life that are inevitable for everyone. But as you can attest to, when we met and we dated and, and then I was faced with a hospitalization, it was because of months, um, of me really kind of neglecting the person that I saw in the mirror and someone that desperately needed a break. I needed to give myself a break. I needed to take a physical break. And there was really no self-compassion there. Um, taking on anything anyone would ever ask, always saying yes to others rather than myself. And that's where the perfect balance of mental toughness and self-compassion comes into play because you can see with the other foot, hey, if I'm too self-compassion, am I really diving into these obstacles, you know, head first and, and, and charging through what might be tough times, but necessary uh, times. So in a nutshell, that is what the balance stage is. It's that 
perfect balance. And, you know, for me, it's self-compassion and mental toughness, but take away those definitions. Just like the build stage is there's foundational building blocks that everyone needs to do to build this, you know, uh, you know, way of, of well-being to mm -hmm. enter your climb. Balance is something that everyone has to find. So, you know, to put it on you, my question, um, you know, really comes to, I guess, and I wrote this down because it's the first time you're doing it. So I have to write it down. Um, what is an example of something that you'll say yes to yourself for? For instance, is there a certain thing in life that you're going to put yourself first to make sure you're getting the self-care that you need? Um, or, you know, anything of that nature. Yeah, definitely. On the weekends. <laughs> I think there's got to be some point in time where I'm doing something for myself that I want to do and that's going to make me happy. Um, and that's going to recharge me for the week. Because the way I think about it, like I'm, you know, you work Monday through Friday and put in so much work and then putting, you know, grinding all week. And it's like, I'm not going to just do things on the weekend that aren't, I'm not going to enjoy it. And of course there's things you got to do. You got to go to certain things and things come up, you know, it's life, but you have, I have to make time for myself, whether it's, you know, doing us doing something, um, together, or if I'm just having some me time and kind of just organizing my to-do list to getting myself ready for the mm -hmm. week, um, do it going shopping, something that I enjoy. I just need to make time for myself to make myself happy and like center myself, you know, cause it's, what's going to yeah. keep me balanced. Yeah. Yeah. Good use of words right there too. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, so I guess, um, I know how you communicate it cause I'm the one getting communicated to, if that's <laughs> the way to say it. Um, but how do you know internally, right? Like what's the alarm going off in your head that maybe I need to pump the brakes. I've been running around too much or, Hey, I, I, I think this might be a little bit too much for me and it could get overwhelming over weeks over time. If, you know, I don't take a step back right now. I think I'll, I'll feel it. Like I'll start to feel stressed. Um, I'll like, my, so <laughs> you know this, I've been, sometimes when I'm really stressed at night, I'll like clench my jaw and I'll wake up with like these insane headaches. Mm -hmm. And so I'll notice if that's happening, I'm like, okay, like, why am I so stressed? Like, what is going on? Why am I, why is my anxiety so high? Like, I'm literally like I'm having constant headaches and I'm clenching my jaw, not even realizing I'm doing it. It's just like a stress trigger or um, whatever you want to call it. Um, so when I start noticing those kind of tendencies or I'm just kind of feeling off and stressed, um, I'm making, I'm like, okay, I, I need to relax. I need to have like some time just to like do nothing and rot. So as they call it, have a rot day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you some, some credit. You, you do, you are very aware of yourself, but one thing that I think we've talked about is you do need to, you know, step away even sooner and like, go, go to the spa, go do something, go, go get your hair done, go get your nails done. Cause you have that mental toughness, just like I do. You're, you can power through the worst situations. Um, you have a good pulse on like, Hey, I'm not going to hit a, I'm not going to hit a wall, but mm -hmm. like us all, we could all maybe even, um, you know, give back to, the, to ourselves a little bit better. So mm -hmm. I am basically telling all the viewers that my wife should go to the spa more. <laughs> I mean, who, who does that? Who signs up for that? This, this guy. though. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's, I mean, you're, you it's, it's, it's admiring to, to be your partner in life. Cause there's a lot of things I've learned, um, that really help you know, balance out my own life from, from you. But we're, we all can always improve. And it's funny that in this instance, I'm sure everyone can improve on being more, you know, self-caring and, and giving them being more selfish. And mm -hmm. sometimes like, yes, saying yes to yourself is appropriate for balance and self-compassion. But saying, you know, yes 
I need to treat myself before I get to that point, I think is healthy in its own way. Um, and when you're operating like a stone cold killer, like yourself of getting everything done, keeping everything organized, cleaning the house every day, every day, uh, <laughs> vacuuming every day, even when I'm saying, Hey, I got a couple calls. Um, you know, it, it warrants that balance of, you know, Hey, how can I make sure that I'm constantly taking care of myself? And I think that's something that we all can do a, a better job of and something, you know, to fill in more context on myself, that has been the biggest improvement that I've made since my last hospitalization, which we just talked about, where I was going, and it's legitimately when I found, when I started when I started to date Christina, our first date, we got um, we went to this awesome bar. Um, she got a blue moon, and I said, I want a blue moon too. But I had a really rough day at work, so I just need to, I need to start with a uh, with a bourbon, and um, you know there were some things going on at work, and you know I write about this now, but it was just like I didn't handle it, um, you know the best way, and I thought I could just power through the time, and I was looking for other job opportunities, and eventually I did shift job opportunities, but the weight was, it was still on me, and. Um, you know, that stress just built up to a point where I was inevitably crashing into a manic episode, even though I just got out of the job that I was trying to leave. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one thing to have the alarm, but it's another thing to also actively take care of yourself, which you do a great job of. I'm just saying, you know, mm -hmm. you could but like everyone. Yeah. And having those boundaries, like yeah. your, own, your own boundaries for yourself. Basically, you know, your balance boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that comes with like communication too, when, when it comes to like the partnership that mm -hmm. do we, um, you know, verbalize that like, yeah, we work really, really hard on it, but we are not perfect on it. And we're always striving to be better. And I think when you're, you know, this just happens to be, you know, my, my life partner on the, on the, the phone here, but, um, you have to be committed to getting better. And we talked about compromise. Um, it's not just one person getting their way. It's like finding the middle ground. And I think the one thing we do exponentially well, you know, of course we, we don't stay out of arguments. Not many couples do, but we come back together and try to communicate after the fact of how we can kind of go about it. And, um, you know, one of those aspects that we've talked about is like, hey, we just like we got to have our boundaries, like Christina's saying, and we got to stick to it. And, you know, something that was mentioned too uh, for both of us is like, we got to just, if we need a break, we can't wait until, you know, we hit the fire alarm. I need a break. That doesn't mm -hmm. work. For, that's not going to work for me. And, um, you know, it's, it's almost like you have to, you know, what we've noticed is we have to talk and communicate with the partner so it like doesn't get that far and, and because yeah. of our relationship I mean man there's probably a lot of times that I would have hit the fire alarm and you know who knows where I would be but you know really appreciative mm -hmm. uh, for you to be a big component of the balance section for me yes definitely I mean I just think um doing it for yourself you know doing these things so you don't get to that point it just helps you day to day just be a better person throughout the day. Like I know, for example, like me getting a workout in the morning before work, I'm way happier. I'm a better person. I'm yep. more productive throughout the day and doing that for myself mm -hmm. to feel better. And you know, it shows and you can feel it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely, you know, feels of this, like the balance part, it makes you feel like a well-oiled machine when you're really balanced and like things are doing really well. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the thrive part. And, and, you know, hopefully I can find out the editing where I put up the, 
graphic uh, for, for in the beginning to show that. But in the Thrive, it's the very peak of the mountain and under it, it's labeled empowered mindset, where not only are you functioning at a great you know rate and you've climbed this mountain, you've, you've built the foundation to make sure that you have building blocks to get over whatever hump there is at the beginning. Balance is certainly hard to get, but once you get it, you have that well-oiled machine. And now you're in a part where you're empowered to be at the top. You're empowered to have the mountain and, and you're ultimately feeling as if like you're on top of the world and that it doesn't matter what life throws at you, that you'll take care of it. So there's a lot of feeling that goes into that more than, you know, I, you know, we can really, I guess, go through here. But my last question would be, how do you know that you're feeling your best self? Hmm, I think just by how I feel and how I'm acting. Um, if I'm my happy-go-lucky self, mm -hmm. then I'm feeling great. I know I'm doing my daily balance correctly. But if I'm kind of really snappy and just kind of on edge, I feel like I'm probably not catering to myself in the way that I should with my balance. Yeah. And let's go to that, like, your, your happy-go-lucky feeling, your, your optimal space, right? In those moments, like, is there a time where you've given yourself the credit for being in that moment and kind of letting it all sink in where, you know, hey, gratitude plays a role for it too, but you're almost as if proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I was thinking about that the other day, just because like that feeling, you know, you have to work hard to get to that feeling. You work hard to get to that point. Mm -hmm. You're putting in all these different efforts every day to feel that way, to be your best self, to feel great. And one of those things I've been doing, and I, I was spent, I slacked on it for a little bit, but I gotten back into it, is meditating. And I've been meditating every morning, making I've been habit stacking with it. So I've been habit stack. I, <laughs> I've been habit stacking and meditating after my workouts in the morning, um, setting my intentions for the day through that. And I do you know various types of meditations, whether I'm just on a morning meditation, but what some of the meditations. Um, are actually labeled as like gratitude meditation. So I'm actually mm -hmm. like meditating, but I'm also um, having gratitude, like um, affirmations that I'm saying, and then saying things I'm grateful for. Um, yeah. So affirming all those types of things. So you're kind of doing a two for one in there. So it's mm -hmm. really, it's amazing. And then, you know, when it kind of really centers you, brings you back and just, it just, I feel like it's, it's a really helpful tool for people. I yeah. think it's useful for me at least. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I noticed with the uh, build, balance, thrive. It's not just like checkpoints when you're playing Mario and you're not you're not playing that level anymore. It almost seems like it all works together. And um, yeah, like gratitude is a huge building block and and plays into that empowered mindset. But so does resiliency, acceptance, intention, commitment, mindfulness is another building block of it. So it's. You know, when you're at the top of the mountain, it just, you, you might have just described just gratitude, but it's a whole lot of good feeling. And it's, you know, what I, I term it as is, you know, empowerment. And your strongest moments, you know, aren't when you're fighting through things alone. Your strongest moments is when you're vulnerable and realize that like, hey, in this moment, um, I feel really good about myself and there's a reason for it. And mm -hmm. it, you can tell that like you're reflecting that in those moments. Yeah. Yeah. It's really powerful, honestly. And, and also just um, breathing, like taking some deep breaths and, you know, centering yourself that way too. And really appreciating it's, <laughs> it's funny. Cause I just did a meditation today where they were saying being grateful for this breath and like, just realizing that simple sentence and it's like you really should like the, you should be grateful mm -hmm. for your breath because like, you know that is keeps you alive so yeah it's, it's crazy <laughs> you even the like simplest that. of things right yeah yeah so. yeah well i think that this went swimmingly gonna be a hit <laughs> um 
what are your thoughts on, you know, the climb and, and just more or less, maybe not just the whole concept of build, balance, thrive, but being empowered by the obstacles you have overcome in life and using that as fuel. What's your take? And there is no wrong answer. There's no test at the end of this call. <laughs> I think that everyone's got a story. Everyone goes through different experiences to make them who they are and build yep. them into the person they are. So I think that statement is so accurate in so many different ways um, because you are empowered by what you've gone through and you're going to learn from it and you're going to learn from it, you know, either in a good way or a bad way, however you, whatever path you take to go down that route. So you can mm -hmm. empower yourself to really grow from those experiences, um, become a better person, a stronger person, um, positive person, all, all those, you know, different things. So mm -hmm. I think all these different building blocks really ultimately drive up to that full empowerment. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's what really I got. well said. Um, I might butcher this, but it's almost like, um, you know, what you're saying too is part of like almost like a growth mindset, which I, I do believe in very strongly, but mm -hmm. it's as simple as like this folktale story of um, this person has two wolves that are, you know, fighting and uh, one's a positive one, one's a negative one. And you know, it, I'm butchering probably the story, but the question is which one is going to win in the fight, the positive or negative one. And the answer is whichever one you feed. Mm -hmm. So it's cool kind of thinking that the two wolves are inside of you. Right. And I believe it's like an old Indian tale. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and really it's, it's, it's a constant battle of choosing the positivity um, because whoever you choose is going to win and, you know, who you constantly feed, feed the positivity, feed the negativity. Um, and that goes a long way, not just positivity being a building block, but um, in general, what you're saying, you know, there's a there's a choice that we all have, but it does take time, effort. But once you, you know, put it all together and to can continue to realize that it's not over that there's going to be other mountains to climb there's the journey is so long in itself but just be proud of yourself of being in this moment uh, mm -hmm. could be really powerful too oh yeah definitely you can't take any moment for granted it's every moment's precious yeah. you never know you know how many you have so i agree wholeheartedly well, <laughs> I am so proud of you for so many reasons. Thank you for all that you do for me, Rover, and all of our friends and family. Um, you're a true inspiration for me, and I thank you so much for coming on and sharing more about your journey. Thanks for having me. All right. I love you, Christina, and everyone, you thank you for joining another great episode of The Climb.